Let's review the ideas of domain and range of a function. So this first question asks us to find all the values of x for which this function is undefined. Notice it's asking for when it's undefined, not defined. So why wouldn't the function be defined? What that means is you're not able to evaluate the function if it's not defined. You're not able to figure out an output. What could possibly stop you from evaluating this function? Well, we're, we've got division going on here. And notice that you're never allowed to divide by zero. So we're going to have problems if we try to divide by zero. We cannot have this denominator equal zero. f of x is undefined when the denominator for x minus 12 equals zero. And so you can solve that to find a value of x, which will make the denominator 0. And this is when the function f is undefined. That's the only value that it's undefined for. So that's the only thing you cannot plug into this function. Anything else is fine. Anything else you plug in for x will give you a valid fraction that's meaningful. But 3 will not. So domain is the word that describes the set of all values you are allowed to plug in. So if we're asked to find the domain for that same function, this is the same function as the previous slide, uh, f is undefined when x is 3. It's always defined if x is not 3. So the domain is x not equal to 3. So everything except 3. Now, you might want to write this a different way. For example, you might want to write it as an interval. So we want everything that's not equal to 3. So we can think of that as an interval from negative infinity up to 3 or from 3 up to positive infinity. So these two expressions represent portions of the number line. Negative infinity to 3 represents everything here, but not including this endpoint. 3 to infinity represents everything here, not including this endpoint. So we want both of these intervals. And the way to express that is to put this symbol between them. It looks like a capital letter U. It, just, it means the union of these two intervals. So you could answer this question either by writing this inequality or by writing it using interval notation. How about this one? Find the domain of the function f of x equals 3x plus 1 over x squared minus 4. So again, this function f is undefined when the denominator is 0. So when x squared minus 4 equals 0. So there are several ways we can solve this problem. Uh, I'm going to solve it by isolating the x squared on one side, taking the square root of both sides. The square root of 4 is 2. The square root of x squared is absolute value of x. And if I want to get rid of the absolute value signs here, then I introduce plus or minus on the other side. So when x is plus or minus 2, x squared minus 4 is 0. But those are the things that we can not plug in. That's when the function is undefined. So the domain is everything else. The domain is, let's express this one in words, all x except 2 and negative 2. Here's another one. Let's find the domain of this function. So again, we have a denominator x squared minus 4. That's just like the previous problem. So f of x is undefined 
when the denominator is 0. And we learned in the previous problem that's plus or minus 2. But this has another complication. Notice that we're taking a square root. In order for you to take a square root, it has to be a positive number inside the square root, or a non-negative number. We also need x minus 1 to be a non-negative number. So I can isolate x here if I add 1 to both sides. So I need x to be greater than 1. So for the function to be defined, I need this to be true, but I cannot have x equal to plus or minus 2. Well, since x has to be greater than 1, let's look at this on a number line. 0, 1, negative 1, negative 2, positive 2. I was excluding 2 and negative 2. Uh, I only want things that are bigger than or equal to 1. So I want this point and everything to the right of it, but I can't have this point where x is 2. And I can't have anything to the left of 1. So what's that leaving me? Everything from 1 to 2. So let's write that in interval notation. Everything from 1 to 2 and everything from 2 to infinity. Now, I don't want the 2, so I have to use a round parenthesis when I'm expressing that as an endpoint. I do want the endpoint where x is 1. That's supposed to be a solid circle right there. So to express that with interval notation, I use a square bracket. And then infinity is not a number. You can never include it. So if you have an infinity in your interval, it always gets a round parenthesis. And we want to put these two intervals together, so we take their union. So this is the domain. All right, now let's move on to range. Find the range of this function. Now, range is a little bit trickier. We're not interested in the inputs this time, range describes the outputs. What values can you get out of a function? And that's a lot harder to answer for most functions we could write down. So to help us for the, these simple ones that we're going to look at in this video, we're going to use a graph. Here's a graph of this function. And this should look familiar, the graph of 1 over x squared. And from it, we can reason through the possible output values. Notice that I can get positive numbers out of this because I have positive y values. And I can get any positive output that I want because this, these graphs keep going. They have a vertical asymptote here at x equals 0. They keep going up higher and higher. And I can get an output that's as big as I want by plugging in an x value that's very small. Similarly, I can get an output that's really small by plugging in an x value that's very big. But I'll never get a negative number out of this. And that should make sense. After we've seen the graph, we see that it, we won't get a negative number out. But now we can also reason about that algebraically because x squared, no matter what I plug in for x, x squared is going to be positive. And then the reciprocal of a positive number is also a positive number. I also cannot get a 0 out of this function. No matter what I plug in for x, I'm going to be dividing 1 by a number. But no matter how big x is, x squared could be really big. 1 over x squared might be small, but it won't be 0. So my y values can only be things that are greater than 0. So the range is from this interval, 0 to infinity, positive numbers. Now let's look at one more example. This one's a little bit more complicated, too. So let's look at a graph. And it looks, from this picture, like we're getting outputs that are at least equal to 3. There's nothing on this graph below 3. Now, the graph is a little bit unclear right here, and that might just be the quality of the image. So let's see if we can reason through it now that we know what we're looking for. 
I'm going to plug an x value in, and there are only certain x values I'm allowed to plug in, because I can only put a number into the square root if it's not negative. But then I take the square root of that number, x plus 1. The square root, square root of x plus 1, will always give us something greater than or equal to 0. And then, once we do that, we're going to add 3. So, square root of x plus 1 and then add 3 will give us something greater than 3. Greater than or equal to. Could we get a 3 out of this? Sure. If I plug in x equals negative 1, notice that negative 1 plus 1 is going to be 0. When I take the square root of 0, I get 0. And then when I add 3 to that, I get 3. f of negative 1 is equal to 3. So I am able to actually get a 3 out, even though the graph doesn't really make that clear. Still, the graph was a good starting point for me to start thinking about how to reason through what this function does. And so now we can see, whenever I plug in something legal for x, the output is always going to be greater than or equal to 3. So how can we express that formally? We would say that the range is from 3 to infinity. It can equal 3. I want to include that in my answer, so I use a square bracket. But infinity is not a number, so it gets a round parenthesis. The range is the interval from 3 to infinity, including 3.